today for this latest Nicholas Children's live stream. Joining me today is Dr. Gilbert Smith. Thank you so much for being with us, Doctor. Oh, thank you. You are a child me. and adolescent psychiatrist here at Nicholas Children's Hospital with an incredible amount of experience, so, mm -hmm. so we're always so grateful to have you here. Um, today we're here to discuss a topic that is difficult but very important to talk about, mm -hmm. and that is uh, when it comes to suicide awareness and prevention. Mm -hmm. um, let's get started with, it appears that with this topic there seems to be a lot of stigma surrounding it. Um, why do you explain to us why it is so important for us to have these conversations in our homes and with our loved ones? It's important just because of the rate of suicide. It's been increasing among um, children and adolescents. I think years ago we never had these conversations because it was more of a taboo. And I think because of the stigma um, due to things you see in the media. But it's so important to have it because more kids are struggling in school, more kids are struggling at home, and a lot of times families don't know how to begin to have the conversation conversation because of the age. So it's important to have just because you know, school stressors, peer stressors, social media can lead to a lot of um, depression, anxiety, and lead to suicide. So it's important to have that topic and conversation. Yeah, sadly, the numbers are up right. when it comes to suicide, Completely. especially with teenagers. Yeah. Um, so it's important to have these conversations. How, um, with your expertise, how would you suggest parents start this conversation? What, some suggestions? Just having an open ended conversation. Um, there's many things on the National Alliance of Mental Illness that has parental um, support and evaluation, along with the American Academy of Child and Psychiatry, that have parental like ways to begin the conversation and you can just be very gentle and talk about how they're feeling and what's going on with them and their peers especially if they see you know their child withdrawing a little bit more than usual or if there's has change in appetite and energy so just say like how have you been doing what's been going on and just be very gentle about it and what are some of the suicidal ideations when when we talk about this topic what drives a person to do this, to get to this point? A lot of times it depends on like what's going on stress-wise, as I was saying. A large amount of depression, decreased energy, or there are signs of depression that can lead to it. Um, sometimes there may not be any true warning signs because you're not looking, but sometimes when they do a background check, there were changes in appetite, there are changes in sleeping patterns, and just you know, may have had a loss of friends or peers that they just feel like, you know, there's hopelessness and helplessness. And that's why it's always good to make sure um, if a kid changes, you know, something that they're normally doing, if they're playing normally a sport and they no longer want to do that, they're withdrawing more, they should check in and see how they're doing. Yeah, and so. as parents, we have that little voice inside of us, or that little something, right, that sometimes Completely. we question, oh, am I overreacting, but yeah. there's no such thing as too much communication. When no, it comes, never, right? exactly. So just keep <laughs> the lines of communication open as much as you can yeah. at all times. And just trying to keep it balanced, and if you have someone in the family who they may reach out more and respond to, that's always good to have a check-in as well. When we talk about um, this topic, because it, because we're talking about children and teenagers, mm -hmm. um, I think so often we hear parents who, who eventually find out that their child perhaps had suicidal thoughts. Right. Um, oftentimes you'll hear them say, I didn't see any signs. He or she right. never mentioned, or it didn't seem to be struggling with mental health issues. What do you say to parents? Or what, what, what more can we do? And I think a lot of times that does happen because they'll go to their friends first, their peers, um, their online group, and you'll start noticing in schools. So those are ways to like associate to see if they're withdrawing a little bit more uh, because parents are busy. They're making sure they're taking care of everything. They see everything is going on that's um, regular. And sometimes you don't see the signs where, but the family as a unit, to check in with their siblings, to check in with others who they're around, to see what's been happening. Those are wonderful things that families can do, right? right. As a family, being alert. Mm -hmm. As a community, mm -hmm. like what can we do to help? Because sometimes you, you catch it. You mm -hmm. yourself may catch that someone near you seems not to be okay. All right. And have the open end conversations. There is a group that's American Foundation for Suicide Awareness that does walks and do it in a way of um, talking about it in a healthy way that is so not taboo. And I think that's where a lot of it comes in, where that, you know, it's like, oh, it's you really can't talk about it. But you should be able to talk about it because it's real and it happens. But if you catch it and you talk about it, there's treatment. And I think that's sometimes what people are afraid of. You know, the talk treatment, feeling about their feelings, and just learning how to decrease and de-escalate, and finding ways to 
decreased their suicide thoughts. And I think knowing that and having that hope and opening that conversation, I think, will definitely help parents understand and, and families understand. And that's really why we're here today, right? Correct. To open up those conversations. Right, exactly. Right? And, and to make it perhaps not as, uh, not in a desperate moment, but rather if, if you have it regularly. Completely. Yeah. And, and it is difficult sometimes. I know, as a mom, right? It's right. tough. It's tough to open up that conversation. Some kids are just so open. Completely. <laughs> but others are not. Yeah. It, takes, it takes more work. And it takes practice because they'll have parents come in and like they won't talk to you. And you'll find a way to reach a kid. And then, yeah, they open up and their parents are really surprised. You have to reach them where they're at because some kids, if you talk to them about sports, may talk about it. If you talk about it, about what their interests, it helps decrease that guardedness and not thinking that you know, you're attacking them because it can be, each person's different trying to figure out, and that's why I was saying there's family members that might be able to reach out to them and letting them know so they can check in as well. And also, if you if you don't know as a parent, or if you don't have that relationship with your child, it can happen. Your child no. is very introverted. There are professionals Completely. that are here to help. Um, I've witnessed uh, personally how much help therapy can do if you find a good therapist. Right. Here at Nicholas Children's Hospital, I know that the therapists work very hard to help right. these children really open up and right. get the help they need. Yeah, definitely. Between like um, psychologists, therapists, and um, psychiatrists, just always find the one that you connect with is um, a task within itself because every all of us are different and if you're not comfortable with someone it's fine to say that so you can find someone that they can respond with and connect with so they can open up and heal the wounds that are happening inside so for parents um, caregivers family members who are who are joining us and fear that perhaps their loved one is considering having suicidal thoughts completely let's mention once again if you can some of some of the signs and I know sometimes they're not there or they're not visible but what are some of the clear signs that they should reach out for help um, decreasing grades are major withdrawing from friends that they used to be a part of um, sleeping more um, not having energy to like get up take shower poor hygiene which some people would say normal adolescence but what's the level of normal adolescence to other things are happening um, the changes your appetite decrease or increase along with um, also having the thoughts of not wanting to be here. Um, nowadays, because of social media, people are texting it online and texting their friends. And I think that's a good thing because some friends will reach out to the parents like, oh, so-and-so just text me this. And that, do not ignore those signs. And take it seriously and get the help. And so I know as parents, some sometimes things. we're walking, um, you know, that, that fine line where if a friend were to call you and give you this information, um, they may feel, you know, torn whether or not you right. should tell your child. Balance through that, but definitely yeah. take it seriously. Yeah, it takes a village. Yeah, yeah it really yeah. does, doctor. Yeah. For, for the, with all the experience you've had, where undoubtedly and, and clearly, unfortunately, you've had to deal with patients who have had suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. and family members desperate to keep them alive. Right. What advice do you give to those watching us now that, that really are at that point where they fear that this, this may be a reality? What, what should they do? Should they reach out for help if they themselves can't reach that child? Absolutely. I would go to the local emergency room to have them checked by a crisis unit if um, it gets to that level, especially suicide, because it is real and there's a large level of completion and attempts. So any type of sign to take it seriously. And since we are on social media mm -hmm. and we have people of all ages right. that join us, thankfully, for the younger teenagers, young adults watching, that maybe they don't have kids, but they have friends. Right. And like you said, sometimes they're the first line of defense. They're the ones seeing them every day at school. Right. Um, what advice do you give? Um, to reach out to them. I, a lot of times when I first see a patient, I let them know about the 1-800-SUICIDE hotline. There's yes. also text talk. There's a Trevor Project for a group of individuals. There are numerous hotlines to reach out for crisis if you're in need. Definitely want to make sure people are aware of those, especially if they're suffering in silence. And actually giving that to um, a family friend in need because it's like helpful because it's someone to talk to. And nowadays they can do it through texting and various social medias that save, secure, we train professionals to help evaluate. Right, so maybe even if we aren't able to reach our child or they won't open up to us, sometimes just handing them that phone, that number they can right. call. Or sometimes, it's amazing, but sometimes we do find that the kids open up more to a stranger perhaps in certain Completely. moments. And become right. less guarded yes. because they feel like there's judgment happening. When, and yeah. I think sometimes families feel that way. It's like, what, where have I failed? And it's not, it's not a failure. It's just something that happened and having open communication. 
Yeah, and the reason for being here too is that to knock down that taboo, right? Where, Completely. Where rather than be so afraid of the word mm -hmm. of suicide, right? Yeah. It's prevention yeah. and it's talking about it and opening up so that 100%. it won't happen. Yeah. Yeah, because there's always hope. There's and that's why we hope. wanted to join yeah, you today, completely. not just to give you information, but to give you hope. We Always. can't lose hope. Yeah. You mentioned, Doctor, so many wonderful resources that there are, and that's mm -hmm. a very important message as well. Not only the professionals here at Nicholas Children's Hospital always willing um, to hopefully help your children and save lives, but mm -hmm. so many others in the community that are helping as well. So um, we want to let you know that if you by any chance find yourself in that situation where you fear for a loved one and you're afraid that that they may be having suicidal thoughts. Um, the, the first thing you can do most definitely is called the National Suicide Prevention um, Line, their lifeline, which you, all you have to do is dial 988. Mm -hmm. 988 and you can reach someone that has experience that at least can, can talk to them and give them hope as mm -hmm. well. Um, and keep an eye out because those resources you mentioned, we wanna make sure you have them. So Nicholas Children's Hospital soon will be posting those resources for you so that, so that you have them on there and, and can have all the information you need. Anything else, doctor, you'd like to add for, for those joining us that maybe just need a, a little word of advice or hope? It's, it's not cowardice or um, weakness to reach out for help. It's actually showing that you have inner strength, that you know internally what's happening. And it's not, and all parents know what's going on with their child. So definitely reach out to help to get the, the best advice and help with support. And that's where I wanted to advocate. It's not you know someone telling what's happening. It's someone helping you support um, your child and developing more effective coping skills that could have led to you know this thought process of not wanting to be here on this earth anymore. Yeah, because it's mm -hmm. just too important. Exactly. To let it go and not and not watch the signs and listen to others and like you said, it takes a village. Yes. So we all come together. Exactly. Well, I want to thank you so much, Dr. Smith. You mm -hmm. always bring us so much information. I try my best. Uh, <laughs> so thank you so much. It's mm -hmm. great to have you and to all of you who joined us here as well. Again, look out for those resources that post from Nicholas Children's and we want to acknowledge all of those who sadly have been affected by suicide. We hear you and our hearts are with you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you Doctor. Thank you.